Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome to my guide for The Guiding Lands in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. The Guiding Lands is a new game mode in Iceborne, and basically it's kind of like the end game, except, uh, you know, it doesn't feel quite as difficult as something like Extreme Behemoth or Ancient Leshen like we had in the base game. So I'm thinking this is just like their new game mode, and you probably won't spend all your time here, but it is, it is very interesting, and it's also really important for a few reasons. You're going to run into end game materials that you need in order to craft final upgrades for some weapons, as well as completely unlocking weapons you've never seen before and armor sets you've never seen before. This is because you're going to run into monsters you've never seen before. Okay, so this is where you go to fight new monsters. We're probably going to be fighting Rei Zhang here, and I have a suspicion that we're going to see a new area in Guiding Lands. I, I have a strong suspicion that Capcom is going to be introducing a fifth area in the Guiding Lands. That's what I would do if I was them. I would add either a snow area or like a top of the mountain area, something like that, and then we'd throw in a few new monsters, maybe for next year, who knows. So yeah, Guiding Lands is a big deal. You're going to want to finish the story mode in order to unlock it. And uh, now let's go ahead and get into the details of exactly how it works. So we know the Guiding Lands is four areas, the Ancient Forest, the Coral Highlands, the Rotten Vale, and the Wild Spire Waste. There's actually two camps. One of the camps is hidden, you have to go find it. And then you have to, uh, you know, give the lady the resources to build it, just like you would with any camp that you unlock. Each of these four regions have to be leveled up, right? You start at level one, you try to bring it all the way up to level seven. Now, right now, when you start out, you're gonna have like a level cap. You can only bring it up like to level four, for example. As you level up these areas, better and better monsters come out, especially the monsters you wanna fight because you wanna get their secret armors and their secret weapons, right? So it's really important that you level up the areas. Leveling up the areas can be kind of complicated. If you try to level up one area, it'll lower the levels of the other areas. What I've found is that you can level up two areas at a time and kind of max them out. You can't do it for all four. If you try to do that, you just won't be able to maintain all four. So try to do two at a time, and then when you want to go to the other regions and you know fight the end game monsters in those regions, you'll just level those up. So you level up by doing a variety of actions. Now, this is a part that kind of confused me when I got started, so I want to make sure that I kind of explain it to you better than the game explained it. Each of the monsters that you see, when you travel to the Guiding Lands, there'll be a few monsters there. In each of the monsters that you see, if you open your map, you'll see they belong to a particular region, right? Could belong to the Ancient Forest, for example. Well, you can go fight that monster and kill it, break its parts, gather its tracks. All those things are going to raise the level of that region up. But let's say that monster, let's say it was Anjanath, let's say he travels out to the Wildspire Waste, and you actually capture him in the Wildspire Waste. What do you think happens? you actually level up the Wildspire Waste a little bit at the same time that you're leveling up the Ancient Forest. You don't want that. So be sure you not only kill the monsters in the regions you want to level up, meaning that uh, Anjanath is an Ancient Forest monster, so you target him specifically, but also make sure that you're actually targeting him while he's in the Ancient Forest. If you don't want to mess anything up, make sure he stays in the Ancient Forest. Don't forget, there is a Challenger Mantle you can use to get monsters to follow you into the region that you want. Now, when you get started in the Guiding Lands, meaning you just finished the story, you'll notice you can only go up to level 4. But did you know you can actually bring it all the way up to level 7? What's going on is there's a level cap, and you have to unlock those other levels. You do that by raising your Master Rank. Master Rank is just like Hunter Rank. It's the same idea. You go out, you fight monsters, and your Master Rank goes up. You gotta get your Master Rank to level 49, and then talk to the team field leader. He will give you a special quest. He does this again at 69, and then again at level 99. And each time you do this, you raise the level cap to the Guiding Lands, and you unlock more and more monsters that you can fight, therefore more and more equipment and weapons that you can build. So really, one of the things about the Guiding Lands is that you need to increase your Master Rank like crazy, and I actually have some tips for that as well. From all of my experience for leveling up my Master Rank, the fastest method, and I tried every method, the fastest is going to be just going through the actual Guiding Lands. And I think I know why. I think it's because you fight the monsters there, and they're giving you the same experience as the monsters in the optional quests and the investigations. The big difference is all about the load screen. So, you know, let's say you queue up a fight, you, you've got your, your friends with you or in your lobby, you gotta wait for them to join, you gotta wait for them to ready up, everyone's gotta have a meal, you gotta check your equipment, blah, 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 right? And then you finally go. There's this long ass loading screen, because the loading screens in Iceborne are pretty bad. You beat the monster, you go through another load screen. Then you queue up the next monster. You wait for everyone to ready up, and you go through another load screen. 
Guiding Lands isn't like that. You can fight like six to 10 monsters in a row, no load screens. So this is going to be your fastest method of leveling up is to just stay in the Guiding Lands. Let me mention though, uh, the investigations, also do give pretty good materials, especially if you pick an investigation with lots of rewards. And you kind of have to get your optional quest done anyways. The optional quests are loaded with terrific uh, awards, like uh, rewards, I mean, leveling up your gear, uh, exclusive charms you get from the house cat, like spare shot. So you want to get your optionals done anyways. I would just bite the bullet and get as many of them done as possible early. Uh, but, but once you're ready to really grind, Get in that Guiding Lands with a decent team of people and just kill everything as fast as you can. In the meantime, while you're grinding in there, you can go looking for the Bone uh, Gathering Points and the Ore Gathering Points. Those have exclusive Guiding Lands Ores and Bones that you need in order to craft your end game gear as well. And those no longer show up on the map in Guiding Lands. It's actually really confusing because they have it. First of all, they look different. They don't have the same, uh, you know, they don't have the same appearance as Gathering Points in the other maps. They look different, they can kind of be hard to spot, they can be well hidden, and they don't show up on the map. I don't even think your scout flies go for them either. Also, occasionally, you'll get a message saying like a big gathering point has arrived. It's basically just like a larger version of the what you normally would see for like the bone or the ore. If you go and you gather from that, you're guaranteed to get a really good uh, rare material from it that you would normally be able to get from the other spawn points in that area. So always check for that. There's only one of them when it does spawn uh, and, you know, keep your eye on that message. So you can get a lot of things done in the gathering, uh, the, gui <laughs> the gathering, the guiding lands, and especially you can level up quickly in the guiding lands. Be sure you have a good team. If you need a good team, you can't find one randomly. Be sure to check players in my Discord where it's a huge 20,000 people Discord. You can go there, LFG, and look for a group that'll help you as well, okay? Now let's talk about the exclusive monsters that you unlock in the Guiding Lands. Zenogar, he's going to appear after you complete the first set of Fanged Wyvern Special Tracks analysis. We'll talk a little about, about what that is in a minute. Uh, but yeah, you can fight him very early. Ian Garuga, he, you're going to find him the first time you level your uh, forest region up to level three. Scarred Ian Karuga, if I'm saying his name right, you have to increase your forest region all the way up to level 6. You have to That means you've got to be at master rank level 69. Brute Tigrix, you have to increase your rotted region to level 6. This also requires master rank 69, of course. Gold Raytheon is going to be for the Wildspire Waste region. And Silver Rathalos is going to be for the Coral Highlands region, okay? And all of those are level 69, right? So, uh, but early on, Zenogar and Ian Garuga, right? And then the last four is after you've reached master rank 69. All right, and now let's talk about analyzing special tracks that you can use to lure out monsters in the Guiding Lands. Basically, you're given like a little bar with dots on it and a little footprint at the end. And it's, it's kind of confusing how you fill that out, but basically it'll say something like Brute Wyvern Analysis. And you think when you see this, oh my gosh, I have to fight a Brute Wyvern. Well, it does help to fight the correct monster of the correct type. I think it helps. Uh, maybe that's just my anecdotal experience, but it will grow if you just fight any monster. So just fight any monster and you will fill out that analysis bar. Once the analysis bar is complete, you can talk to the handler, report your investigation, and you're given an option to lure out monsters. Hit that button and check the list of monsters you're allowed to lure out. You can pick whichever monster you want. So if you want to fight Zenogar or Ian Garuga specifically, you just choose that monster and the monster will be lured out. You're going to have to wait a minute for them to actually show up. They don't show up immediately, but they show up like, I would say within a minute they show up. So that is what the analyzing special tracks mechanic is. If you're wondering, how do I get more of these analyze special tracks kind of like challenges so that I can get more lures? I haven't quite figured that out. I think you just have to keep fighting monsters. But one thing I did notice is occasionally you run into a special track you can gather. And it's like, it usually it's like some big mucky track with like multiple monster parts. And it says signs of a turf war. The moment you gather that, you will get an analyze special tracks, okay? So keep your eyes open for that. Always gather those. And then other than that, I mean, they just show up when you fight monsters a lot. So I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> And that concludes my quick guide to the Guiding Lands. Let me remind you once again at the end, Scarred Ian Garuga is for the Ancient Forest, Brute Tigrix is for the Rotten Vale, Gold Raytheon is for the Wildspire Waste, and Silver Rathalos is for the Coral Highlands. Okay, so depending on which one of those monsters you want, you know, raise the level of that area, once again, 
You want to get your master rank up to level 69 because that's when all those monsters become available. So get out there and start grinding. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.